Howdy folks, welcome back to Sailing Slow Motion. Currently paddling slow motion. We are going nose into the wind, which is fine because you'll have winds at our back coming in. But I wanted to go out today because when we did the overnight to Anclote, my chief complaint was the anchor. The way the boat rested on the surface against the wind and the waves it made for a very uncomfortable night. So I want to set up the bridle today and try and get that figured out. The winds are blowing about five to seven out of the north, so we should be able to sail for a little bit too. The tide is almost out. We got another probably an hour or so before low tide. And we should have a very pleasant day. Right now, I'm just getting my workout in with the paddling. One thing that happened which, you know, this month is all about gaining experience for the Everglades Challenge. Taking the boat out as often as I can, seeing how everything works and reacts, how my body works and reacts also. And one thing that happened was I turned my inReach on to track today's progress and the battery is dead. So I left it on when I got off the boat the other day. So, it's, I mean, it's good that it happened so I can be watching for that and make sure when I push that power button that it actually powers off instead of just pushing it and then ignoring it. So anyway, today we're going to go out, have a little fun, and sail around, set up anchor, and just relax. I didn't really bring anything to eat, but a lot to drink. Uh, a little over a gallon because my body seems to use a ton of water out here on the water. And but I did bring some snacks, so at anchor, I'll just chill and relax for a little bit. Try out my new chair. I'll show you guys soon. The folks along the canal are always so nice and chatty. It's fun passing people that I see out sunbathing or have their dogs out. And this lady that I just passed, I'll put the clip now so you'll see it here in a second. But as I was coming up, she pulled out her phone and was recording me. So I hit the little button recorded back, but somewhere out there, is a lady with a video of the exchange you're about to see right here. Howdy! Beautiful day! Hopefully there's a little wind out there. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. I know, it makes for easy paddling. <laughs> yeah. My eyes might be playing tricks on me, but I'm looking out at the water and it looks pretty choppy for some reason. And it's kind of hard to see, but like it's just, it's distorted on top, which makes me think that there's like white caps out there that would be doing that. I don't know, about to find out. Okay, so we have grounded out here on the flats. It's low tide and that was expected. While we're out here, I'd like to set up the bridle anchor points for uh, when we do set anchor. So my, my thought right now is I'm just going to attach it to the eyelets on the Akas. My concern is that they're a little far back, too close to the center line to be effective, but it's, it's possible that it'll work. What I'm gonna use is this ring, the stainless steel ring, and then I'm going to use this Dyneema cord to run from each of these eyelets to the nose of the, the boat, the bow of the boat. And then this eyelet will set in the front so I can tie the anchor line to this. So with those being equal length, as it pulls, it should pull the nose into the wind and the waves, hopefully. So we'll see. But the, the knot that I'm using is a bowlin and it's got the Yosemite lock on it. I think it's also called like a Jacob's lock. It's got a bunch of different names but I'll show you how to tie that real quick because this is a really strong knot and it's, it doesn't slip at all. Like, like the Dyneema cord's rated at like 1600 pounds and the knot is rated for like 75% of that or close to that. So anyway, it, it'll hold way stronger than that anchor is gonna hold on this thin little line, which is surprising. But check out this knot. So to tie this knot, we're just going to do a regular bullion. Now, anyone that is a climber or a fisherman or a boater, sailor, 
you all probably know how to tie a bowline pretty well. So, what you might not know is this finish that is pretty good. So what we're going to do is we have our bowline here, and we're just going to take the tang and go down through this hole on the top, and then back up through that bottom one. All right. And then I'm just going to dress the knot nicely. Now we have a nice looped knot that is not going to slip. And then our tang in line with the rope so it just sets a little bit cleaner. So I really like this knot and I use it quite often. Okay, so what I've done is I've attached the bowlins to the ring and then ran those lines evenly up to these two loops which I have on the carabiners. So again these carabiners are rated for over a thousand pounds and that way I can attach these quickly to these eyelets on either side. So once tide comes up we'll get out there a little ways and set this up and set anchor and see what happens. But we are breaking free and we're being pushed towards the houses, but I want to go towards the north where the wind is coming from. So what I'm going to do is just a little Everglades challenge practice with the paddle. And I know not every day out there is going to be ideal. Some days are going to challenge me. So what I want to do is I'm just going to paddle to the channel that's over here and then run up the channel with the paddle. There's no boats out here today. I'm kind of surprised. I mean, it is a work day, but um, there's nothing out here. Nobody out here. So the channel's kind of, I don't have to worry about being in somebody's way. So I'm gonna paddle up and what I do wanna do is check in the break of all the islands and see which ones I can navigate through for just future reference. So I know when the, scallop season comes around I'm gonna be wanting to go that way and taking the big boat slow motion out is nice but it's not really a good uh, scallop boat this would be a really good scallop boat it's easy to get out into the water it's easy to get back in it can go super shallow uh, it has no problem going deep or anchoring so I want to be able to go north and I got to find the best opening so that's what I'm gonna do right now and in true silky fashion does not want to turn right so i got to spin all the way around even at paddle to go that way so do a almost a 360 but we're going now it's so funny this is pretty wild at how low the the sides of the channel are you can see the sand right up there the channel is not very wide. It's big enough for about two boats to go through side by side. Not a lot of playroom in there. But this part of the channel is dug out just around this bend here, and then it cuts back to the right, and then there's little breaks in the island chain. But all this rubble that's here, I believe, is from when they dredged this out. They just scooped it out and then threw it off to the side. I really like coming out here and catching these sandbars and just walking around. It's so beautiful and calm and nice. There's nobody out today, but take a look at this. I mean, <laughs> is this the life or what? I am so lucky. So the tide is coming in and it's getting a little difficult to paddle in here. It's not horrible, but it's enough. But I wanted to see how hard it is to get out and walk the boat forward. So paddling takes a lot of energy and walking <laughs> doesn't, you know? So as I just grab the boat and I take my steps forward, it just glides along. This takes very, very little effort compared to paddling. So when I get into those shallow spots on the Everglades Challenge that I'm, I'm really wearing myself out with the paddle, if it's shallow like this, I think what I'm going to do is just hop out and give it a little walk. So I'm just going to carry this along just outside of the channel where the water's less than knee deep or right around knee deep and just follow it along. So 
if you notice at the end of that clip I trip over a rock and shortly after that happens as I'm still pulling it forward we get into a very rocky spot and it would be shallow and then deep shallow and then deep so it got to the point where that just wasn't practical tides coming in sailing into the wind isn't pleasant enough to continue so I'm just gonna head back down on the channel and then hang a right past the sandbar and then get sails up. As I'm paddling along, I figure why paddle when I could sail? So we'll just do a little jib. Oh yeah, that grabs us and scoots us along just fine. Much easier. So just ahead and to the right is about the narrowest of the sandbar. So I'm just gonna kind of go straight into that and then turn into it and then pull across. I'm looking for the darkest color and it seems like we're getting pretty close to it. So let me roll this up. And cut over. And then we'll just pull across and then open sails again. Okay. So I just put the main up and we got a crosswind right now and so I got to turn it in a little bit. We still have another 25 yards of about about eight inches of water. So it's getting a little tight to pull so I'm gonna let the water come up a little bit and then drag it. Although I do need to practice yanking this thing across the ground because the Everglades challenge starts on the beach and you have to be able to pull your boat down. It starts above the high tide mark. So you have to pull it down and then get it into the water. So the muscles that are used, a lot of leg and uh, grip just to hold on to it. But I'm thinking if I use that bridle, that anchor bridle, and connect to those two ends and wear my harness that I climb the mast on the big boat with, I should be able to clip onto that, grab the front of the boat, use my legs and my arms, and yank this thing forward. So it's a thought. I'll, I'll give it a try when uh, I have my harness and see if I can pull it that way. Okay, so I just hooked up the bridle. Now I'm gonna give it a pull, but there's a boat coming behind me that I gotta show you. This is gonna be cool. Oh yeah, this pulls. This is nice. All right, I'm gonna stop here. I gotta show you this. Check this thing out. It's got the little paddle wheel on the side. That is too cool. <laughs> That's awesome. That's a pretty cool charter. Okay, so we made it to the very edge here. I'm gonna point the boat into the wind a little more. As I come off the seat, we come free. But the boat wants to take off. So being harnessed in just in case you lose it in a scenario like this is a great idea. But I'm in about about knee deep water here, pointing into the wind. I just hop back in. Oh yeah, I just close hauled the sails. That was enough to get her going. So we're free. Let's go enjoy some wind. So looking behind us, I can see the trail from the keel dragging through the sand. So I'm gonna try something, move forward, and I'm gonna try my, my new seat and see how it works out. I'm not saying that I'm gonna be the most comfortable person on the race, but I'm gonna be pretty darn close. Too cool. Yeah, this is gonna be awesome. On the good days, of course, when it's when it's windy and stormy, I'll have to be in my seat. But the fact that I can come out here, kick back, lounge, it's almost going to be like a vacation more than an endurance race, you know? The Everglades luxury cruise. We'll see. I, I know it won't be like that, but... Okay, so we just dropped sails, and the boat is sitting how it was sitting at anchor. So. 
It has naturally turned itself broadside into the wind and the waves and is slowly being pushed on a drift. So we're gonna, I just pulled the anchor out. I have too many lines and ropes that are not being used on the boat that are on the boat. So I do need to untangle myself and get everything put away neater to streamline this process. But I'm going to tie the anchor on to the eyelet and see if the bridle does any, any different. But I'll show you how we sit. So the wind is coming from this direction and the waves are coming from that direction. So you can see we are, we are very broadside to the whole situation here, which causes the boat to list side to side. Let's see if we can correct that. This will be the most difficult process is tying that on there because it's so far forward. But as long as I don't, as long as I keep my balance and I hold on to something, it should be good. And really, depending on the waves, how much I get knocked around here. So, we're only in about four foot of water. I'm gonna throw the whole, the whole dang length out there. So I don't chop my toes off. <laughs> All right, let's see what happens. It'll take us a minute to drift off that, obviously, because we got 50 foot out there. We're going right over the top of it, so this will be pretty interesting to see what happens. So the anchor is now behind us. We have the rope panning out and it should get taut here in just a moment. Okay, it is straight. Now let's see what the boat does. Woo! That grabbed. So we're watching now the anchor get tight and pulling on the bridle and this is doing something. This is great. So you can see the big Y. We got it coming from this eyelet to the ring over to that eyelet right there and then out to the anchor. We are pointed into the wind, into the waves. I think I'm going to be able to sleep on the Everglades Challenge. <laughs> Woo! While I'm out here dolphin hunting, just want to point out again if you can see how perfectly straight out from the bow that anchor line is. I'm so glad that worked. And it's pretty windy right now too. Now just for reference, I tied the anchor line onto the front cleat. And you can see that it's already, I just did this, and it's already angling off. And the boat is getting really bouncy. So the bridle makes a huge difference. Yeah, you can see already we're at about a 45 on this anchor line. It's pretty wild. We got some fishermen getting those crab pots over there. So yeah, it looks like that that angle, that 30 to 45 degree angle that we get is is about what happens off that cleat. So either way, it's definitely a lot more bouncy right here. It's not turning as broadside as it felt the other night. Um, maybe it wasn't turned as broadside as I thought it was just because it was so dark, but it's definitely rougher sitting at this angle than it is when it's pointing directly into it. So I'm calling that a success. I'm pretty happy with that fix. I'm pretty happy with the seat. The seat is so comfortable to set on the deck here and relax and steer with the tiller. I'm really looking forward to just chilling there and cruising, you know, 10, 15 miles, just relaxed. It's gonna be so good. But I, I don't have a lot else to say. I don't really think there's reason to show me sailing back or paddling back. That's all, all the same repetitive stuff. So I will see you all next time and thanks for watching.